Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We have been made very rich because we have a rich father. In fact, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ under the new covenant. The problem is that many Christians do not know what legacy has been left to them and therefore they're living as paupers, spiritually speaking. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Hi, welcome to Set Free. It's Phil here and with me is author and teacher Ken Legg. And all this week we've been looking at new covenant thinking versus old covenant thinking. It's a very interesting topic and one that's very important to every believer. And the subject, Ken, obviously is very near and dear to your heart because you've recently written a book about it. That's right, Phil. And uh, that book is New Covenant, New Glory. But it's important to me not from a doctrinal point of view, but mainly from a pastoral perspective because I care about those that God has entrusted to me and I see many struggling today because they do not understand the inheritance they have under the new covenant. Because we're really not talking about here knowing the difference between the old covenant, the new covenant and you know doing some sort of head knowledge study. We're talking more about understanding why it's important and how we react to that. It's a changing of your mind, a changing of your motivations, I suppose. Yeah, because it's going to affect your whole life and especially your relationship with God. Mm. Now, I heard a story uh, that took place over 100 years ago. A lady by the name of Hetty Green uh, was described by some as being the world's greatest miser. Not the sort of... Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I know a few people who might compete. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Present company excluded, of course. Um, but seriously, this lady, Hetty Green, she she would do everything she could to, to save money. For example, she, she wouldn't heat her porridge oats up because she didn't want to cut, pay the cost of heating. So she ate them cold. Can you imagine that? That's pretty tight. Yep. And even when her son was uh, in need of medical surgery, she drove around looking for somewhere where she could get it for free, and it cost her son his leg. His leg was amputated. If she'd acted much quicker, then she could have saved him. And this is the kind of way she lived all the way through her life. Now, the tragedy, Phil, is this, that when she died, she had $100 million in her bank account. Wow. $100 million. Back then. Back then. (laughs) That's a lot of money now. Huge. But back then it was an absolute fortune. And, of course, the spiritual analogy is that many Christians can live not as misers but as paupers Mm. without realizing that they've got a big spiritual, big fat spiritual bank account Yeah, and And, not draw from that, you know. It's a good example, too, of how often, you know, we receive blessing from God and, and from others that it all comes in. It's got to flow out. It can't just sit there in a reservoir all, yeah. all on its own and build up like that bank account because otherwise it becomes stale. It doesn't produce fruit. And I'd say that was the case in her life. Yeah, and that's right. And, and, and you know, it was given so that we could draw from it and, and benefit from it. Mm. We've talked about, you know, some of the, the riches of the Christian's inheritance this week under the, the new covenant. Um, can you tell us some more about that? Yeah, one of the benefits that we read in Hebrews chapter 8 uh, and verse 12 when, when the writer talks about the new covenant, he said... Um, God would say that their sins and their lawless deeds I would remember no more under the new covenant. In other words, God is not conscious of our sins. Now, this is a wonderful thing, but many Christians don't enjoy that. Mm. What I'm talking about is is the sense of um, a righteousness consciousness. We, we, we tend to have a sin consciousness rather than a righteousness consciousness. And and uh, it kind of drags us down. Now, the book of Hebrews actually uses this term about we're encouraged to go on to perfection. Now, that perfection is not a moral perfection, like a sinless perfection. It's The word perfection actually means to come back to that thing for which we were originally created, to come into being, to bring something into being for which it was originally created. Now, we're talking about ourselves. Mm-hmm. So what is it that we were created for? Well, we were created for a perfect relationship with God, just like Adam had before the fall, where there was nothing between. Now, we can't have that if we've got sin consciousness between us. And to me, it's just um, an absolute uh, shame that, you know, Jesus went to all that cost of dying on the cross so that we could be forgiven, and yet we still walk around with sin consciousness and somehow even think that God is pleased with us when we 
see ourselves as, uh, you know, miserable failures. Mm -hmm. Whereas that's not what he redeemed us for. It was so that he could remove that sense of guilt and sin and shame between us and walk in, in perfect harmony with him. I guess it's a bit like if you owed, and this would never happen, Ken, if you owed the bank money, large sum of money, and the bank came to you and said, you know what, you don't need to pay it back. There, of course, would never ever happen. But yeah. if that was the case, and then you then still went around about your business and came back to the bank next week with a, a payment on the loan, they'd look at you and say, "What are you talking about? The the computer here tells me that this is there's a zero balance here. You know, we don't need your money, but yeah. we still think that we have this obligation, and that's the same thing with God. He he has wiped away our sin. The the balance is zero, in, in on you know on his computer screen, so to speak." But we still hang on to it and we, we focus on this sinfulness and have this sense of our sinfulness. Why do we do that? Well, I, I think it's um, uh, we're a product of our environment. I, I think, um, see, I've got this saying that religion reminds, but God forgets. Hmm. You think about it. God, hmm, has, God has said, I, I will remember your sins no more. Hmm. But somehow we, we've produced an environment where it seems to be spiritual to always be conscious of sin. You know, we've got a, a confessional, we've got penance, we've got uh, uh, 101 things that we do um, to, to remind us of sin, including preaching from the pulpit, uh, which is very sin-oriented. Um, you know, we, we, we have what I call worm theology. Woe is me, for I'm just a worm. I'm just, you know, uh, crushed down by the weight of my sin. Now, that's true before we came to Christ, mm. but that's all been dealt with at the cross. And now God wants us to have a righteousness consciousness because that's mm. who we are. With I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I remember, uh, Phil, when I was, um, uh, just before I went into ministry, I was working for a particular company and uh, I was reading this book where um, this uh, author said that in order to really be uh, connected to God, we have now got to go back over our whole lives, think of every sin we've ever committed and confess it individually before God and, and uh, you know, renounce it and so on, even though we were born again, you know. Mm. And, well, of course, I knew that there wasn't enough time in my lifetime to do that, <laughs> but uh, I thought I'd give it a go anyway. And what happens if you miss one? <laughs> exactly. Anyway, I thought I'd give it a go. And uh, by the time I, I got into work, my boss said to me, Ken, he said, you look so miserable. What is up with you? And I remember just coming out of there thinking, what a great testimony to the abundant life we have in Christ. See, I, 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 was, I was hooked into this teaching and I was weighed down by it and it was actually crushing me spiritually, but the fruit of it was actually not good. It's another good example of how we are uh, set free. We're transformed by the renewing of our mind and that's really what has to happen here, isn't it? That's exactly right. And, and so when uh, the writer to the Hebrews exhorts us, let's go on to perfection. This is what he's saying is, hey, let's come into this relationship with God for which we were created, where there's nothing between. Now, we've just read, uh, Phil, in, in Hebrews chapter 8, God says, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. So as from God's perspective, he doesn't see sin. He doesn't think sin. Mm. Uh, he's not conscious of sin when he looks at us. So the problem is in our hearts. And, and so it's us that need to realize that we're harboring something here that is uh, basically the product of religion. Not something that God has put into our heart to to make us, you know, grovel before Him, but we're a product of of the religious uh, environment in which we've been brought up in, and we've got to deal with that by understanding that God's word says we're righteous, not sinners, in His sight. I love that audio adrenaline song that says that our sins are forgotten; they're on the bottom of the ocean floor. You know. What wonderful imagery. And that's where God puts them, you know, files them away never to yeah. be seen again. But we often find it difficult to deal with that. And, and he uses a lot of analogies like that, you know, as far as the east is from the west and yeah. cast them behind his back and, and yet we still don't get it. Yeah, that's right. Maybe we're, I don't know, maybe we're just a little bit thick sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can. But. Well, that brings us to the end of our series this week. Hope you can join us next week when we start a brand new one. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. Find articles and more set free podcasts in the free Vision Christian media app or at vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.